welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. We are live with our uh, <laughs> a special guest today. He is the leader of the People's Party of Canada. He is currently on a Western Canadian tour just recently in BC, now in Alberta, here in Calgary. He's going to be making a stop up in Red Deer later on this yeah. weekend. But welcome to Calgary, Mr. Bernier. Thank you, Christopher. Very happy, very pleased to be here and very happy to be in Western Canada because, as you know, I was not able to travel by plane and now I'm able to do it. So that's why I'll be on the road, uh, On I hope, uh, I'll be able to travel also next fall, but we'll see. It's always a challenge. <laughs> so what brings you here to Alberta? What brings you to Alberta right now? What are you hoping to get out of this new tour that you're currently on? Yeah, so I was in BC, like you said, in uh, Vancouver uh, yesterday. I was at the uh, uh, gala for the uh, Justice Center for Constitutional Freedom. And actually, you know, they gave uh, the Freedom Award to Tamara. Uh, and that was great. We had a lot of people, freedom fighters over there yesterday. And so now I'm here in Alberta to promote our party, to promote our ideas. We are campaigning. We know that the election may be in two years or three years, but for or us... two months uh, from what the media is reporting yeah. today, that <laughs> Justin's looking at an election potentially even the next few weeks. Absolutely. You never know. You have to be ready. So that's what I'm doing. And, you know, on the ground, meeting our people, having rallies, uh, speaking to people, because I cannot count on the mainstream media to cover us. Uh, were cancelled by the mainstream media so it's better to be on the ground meeting our people and that's what i'm doing and also building the organization i'm doing that with kelly he's a lieutenant for western canada very active uh, in alberta bc and saskatchewan so i'll be with him doing that tour and meeting our people our writing associations and doing also public rallies so um, i'm very pleased to be here i like to be here and you know as you know they used uh, to call me the yeah. Um, the, the Albertan the, from the, Quebec. Actually, yeah, the Albertan from Quebec. And, you know, for me, it's a compliment. And, um, yeah, so I'm here. And I, so I want to hear what's happening here in Alberta. You know, uh, I know that uh, I'm the only politician who is speaking um, on Western alienation. It's real. And I'm on the ground. I know that it's real. So we must do something as a national political party, and I believe that we have the best platform for uh, people here in Alberta who are looking for a real new alternative at the federal level. So what is that real alternative that you're talking about? What are the alternatives from the quote-unquote mainstream parties, the parties that have a seat in power right now that is different from what you're offering the people of Canada right now? Because I think there's a lot of people out there, because you, you said the mainstream media isn't covering your rallies. They're not talking to you. They're not yeah. talking to people like Kelly. For those who are watching, Kelly is in the gr room right now as well. But what are the alternatives that you're offering that aren't being addressed right now in today's age? But first, uh, that's a shame that uh, these uh, establishment political parties, including the Conservative Party of Canada, uh, are not speaking about Western alienation. When you have here in Alberta 32% of the population that are looking to separate, and it's more than in Quebec. Actually, in Quebec, it's 30%. So it's an important issue for Albertans, but every mainstream political party won't speak about it because they're too afraid. If they, if they gave them a solution, they think that they won't have support in Quebec, they won't have support in Ontario. For us, we have a platform for every province and we want to put Alberta first, but doing that, we will put our country first because if you have the right policies uh, for a radical decentralization, uh, that's the solution for Western alienation. What do you want here in Alberta? You want to be able to have your own police force. You want to be able to um, uh, have maybe more private delivery in healthcare. You want to be able to have your own pension fund. You want to have the same, you want to be able to control your immigration. You want to have the same responsibilities that we have in Quebec and more. So 
we are for that because it is in line with the constitution. Our position, it's a radical decentralization. By doing that, you'll have a smaller government in Ottawa that will respect provincial jurisdictions, will respect taxpayers, will respect our charter of rights and freedoms, and that's the solution. So if you want to know more, I think your people can go on our website, peoplespartyofcanada.ca, and look at the speech that I delivered a couple of years ago uh, about our, our radical decentralization in line with none not interfering in provincial jurisdiction. But when you, you want to have pipelines, you want to be able to build pipelines, we have the solution for that also. We need to use the Constitution, Section 9210 in our Constitution. That's the only way we will be able to build real national infrastructures in this country. And by the way, we use that clause in our Constitution more than 100 times since Confederation, since uh, 1867. So the Conservative won't speak about that. Uh, <laughs> Pierre Polyev said he will build pipelines from the, to the east, to the west, and, but Hopper said the same thing also. And I was part of that team at that time, and we were not able to build pipelines because of the opposition coming from provincial governments, Quebec and BC. So if you want really, if you're really serious about building pi pipelines, you must use the Constitution because doing that, using the Section 9210, the federal government will have full jurisdiction, full authority, full responsibility on pipelines. That means the federal government will be able listen what I'm saying, to impose, yes, impose pipelines on Quebec or BC because the federal government will have the full jurisdiction on that. And, and that's the only way to have a national infrastructure. So, so they, 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 won't, they won't say that because they don't want to impose a pipeline in Quebec. It's not popular. They don't want to impose a pipeline in BC. It's not popular. These politicians are doing politics by polling and focus group. And Pierre Polyev is the same. I, I, ask him, okay, how will you be able to build pipeline if Harper was not able, if you don't use the Constitution? And he won't say that because he doesn't want to explain the situation to Quebecers, to tell Quebecers and people in BC that it's safer for the environment and safer for the population to transport oil and gas by pipelines than by train or by trucks. And we know that in Quebec, we had the lac megantic uh, uh, disaster eight years ago. So you just have to explain. And by the way, we are in 2020. We know that uh, we have the right technology to build safe uh, pipelines across the country. So all that, put all that together, and we have the solution for Western alienations and for economic prosperity. But they don't speak about that because it's not popular. And, and that's why when I resigned from the Conservative Party of Canada in 2018, I said at that time, the Conservative Party of Canada is intellectually and morally corrupt. I was right at that time, and I'm still right today. <laughs> so, so I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Matt, Matt, Let's have a debate. I, want the, I <laughs> love a debate. I yeah. love this back and forth. You talk about giving the provinces more autonomy more powers what away. they have in the constitution Ex giving them what they have in the constitution without interfering yes so how do you how do you balance the need for giving the provinces what they have in the constitution then in the same breath say we're gonna the federal government more ottawa is going to build this infrastructure through your province even if you don't want it how do yeah. you balance that out because if i'm john horgan or yeah. francois yeah. legault and saying Max is crazy here talking about building a pipeline that I don't want in my own backyard, but he's going to steamroll me and do it anyway. That's political leadership. That's political leadership. And you must do that because you have the right in the Constitution to build pipelines. And you have the right to... And we did that to build national infrastructures, you know, our railroad and all that a couple of years ago. So you have the right to do that. And also you must be able to explain that to these governments and, 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 and Canadians that think that, oh, no, it's dangerous for the environment. So that's why we're not doing politics based on, on, on slogan and, and buzzword. We go further than that. We have to explain that. And that's what I like in politics. I like debates because I believe that we have the best ideas and the best solution for a freer and a more prosperous country. So 
I won't interfere in provincial jurisdiction. I'll tell them, these uh, premiers, that it's under our jurisdiction. We'll do that. If you want to come with us, we can do that together. But I just want to correct you. We, the federal government, won't deal by it. It will be by the private sector. So we will have fewer regulations uh, and being sure that they can build it. Now, with all the regulations and the legislation that Trudeau imposed on them, uh, they don't want to build a pipeline. It's, it's costly. So we'll, we'll uh, repeal all these bills, Bill C-10 and C-42, if I remember. And 69, C, the no yeah. pipelines bill, which no. is not really just about pipelines. It's about all infrastructure. Yeah, well. yeah. So, so we'll repeal that. And, uh, and uh, we will be able to have the jurisdiction on that. And if a, a provincial uh, government uh, didn't like it, or uh, we, what we will do, we will, uh, they may be uh, sue us in court, but because we will have used the constitution, we will win that battle in front of the court. Now, still on the same infrastructure projects and pro provincial, there is a lot of discussion on social media, which you should never trust what social media says. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm, I'm breaking the world right now that social media is not the be all end all of what is happening in the world. It's disinformation. I mean. What? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Max. But I want to ask the question about First Nations communities, yeah. because that that is an obstacle that you will have to potentially yeah. overcome as well because mm -hmm. there are first nations community whether it be hereditary chiefs or elected chiefs that are saying nope we don't want pipelines are you saying that the constitution would override the, them and say you know what we're gonna build it no matter what and yeah. just pave paradise and put up a parking lot and put some <laughs> sense? no uh, absolutely and why because if you look what is happening right now the first nation that are on the, the road of the future pipelines, they all agree with that. And because they will have economic advantage and they will have more prosperity, the First Nation who are against it are the ones that are not near where the pipeline will, uh, will be. So, so for me, yeah, let's have the discussion with them. And, and actually, have these, you, these discussions... Have you had the discussion with them? And no. Have you not tried no, to interrupt? Yeah, no, but the federal government did have some discussion with them, and the one that are a uh, place where the pipeline will be agree with that because they had they will have compensation by the private sector, and so they it, so it will be easy to just let them know that okay, we're going ahead, and these other First Nations that are against that and that not part part of the discussion because the pipeline won't be on their on their land. For me, it's not so important. We, 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 we can continue talking about pipelines to the yeah. till we're blue, but there's a lot of conversations that we want to talk about today. But, but it's important to speak about it because... It we, is. It, because here in Western Canada, and, and for our country, for the prosperity of our country, it's important to speak about it. But not just to say we are for it, to explain to Canadians what we will do to be sure to build pipelines. And we are the only national political body that is saying what we will do, why we need to do that, and, 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 uh, and what we will use to be able to uh, have uh, private sector pipelines in this country. There has never been a more urgent time for Canadian natural resources, Absolutely. but particularly our oil and our LNG. We are seeing what's happening in Ukraine. Earlier this week, Justin Trudeau announced that he's giving back a turbine to Russia, and this is going to supply some uh, oil and gas to Germany and the rest of Europe. Do you think this was a smart move? And what would you have done differently in this position to ensure that, A, we get our resources to market, but we start supplying our resources to the people who need it the most, which is Europe, to offset what's happening in Russia? That's a shame that we cannot do that right now because we uh, didn't build pipelines the last uh, 10 years. So now we, we want to do that. The price is good for us. And we cannot export it. So let's, that's why it's an uh, urgency to, to start and, and, and stop speaking about it, but doing it. Uh, that's our position. We, we are, you, we, you talked about it earlier, but I want to jump into it a little bit more here. And that is our natural resources. Yeah. Um, 
there are people in this country who are saying, no, nope, we don't want to export any uh, oil and gas anymore. We want to shut them down. We want to go to electric. But if you look at the electric, it is worse for the environment to sometimes do batter electric batteries than our oil and gas. What is the People's Party of Canada's stance on, on Alberta's natural resources right now? And do you believe that there would ever be a time that the oil and gas industry would be not needed in no, this no, country? No, 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 no. First, our position is very clear on that. Uh, the world will need oil and gas for a long time in the future. You know, that's a sustainable energy uh, resources. So we must exploit it. And our position is, yes, do it. And we can do it while respecting the environment in 2022. So our, our goal is to be able to exploit that. We are in an economic crisis right now, a recession right now. Well, it Do you think we're in a recession? I think so, because the definition of a recession is two, um, uh, semester, uh, two uh, uh, semesters with negative growth. We had negative growth in January, February, and March, and we may have negative growth also in April, May, and June. We don't know. If we're not in a recession right now, we'll be in recession. So we need to be able to export our natural resources oil and gas and all the other natural, uh, uranium also, all the other natural resources that we have. Uh, that's the strength of our country. Let's do it. And our party is 100% in favor of that. You talked about inflation. I want to jump on that and I want to play in that sandbox for a few yeah, minutes yeah. if you don't mind. Uh, earlier this week, the Bank of Canada came out and said we're raising interest rates 100 points. Not been done since 1998. This is a massive hit for uh, small businesses, for people who are struggling already. Um, what the hell's going on right now? And I apologize for being blunt about this, but <laughs> yeah. is this government so out of touch with what's happening on the ground, with what's happening in, with people here in Alberta, with what's happening people from Canadians from coast to coast to coast, that they don't even know what's going on and they're just, like people have said, printing money left, right, and center? Or is this some bigger scheme? Yeah, what's happening right now, uh, it's the impact of what the federal government did the last two years. Uh, they did that with the, uh, the support of the Conservative Party of Canada. What they did, they decided to shut down the economy. And after that, they said, okay, we'll give you money to stay at home. And they created the biggest deficit in our history, $450 billion. And so they asked the Bank of Canada to finance that. They used the Bank of Canada as the ATM machine for the federal government. When you print money out of thin air like that, you have inflation, more money chasing fewer goods. And that inflation is happening right now. Inflation is a hidden tax. The federal government, instead of during that time, during the pandemic, instead of taxing you and saying, I need more money to give that to people that will stay at home, they say, no, keep your money in your pocket, but you won't be able to buy the same amount of goods and services with your money. And that's happening right now. Our purchasing power is going down. Our standard of living is going down and we are poor. When you have 7.7% inflation, that's, you know, we, we didn't see that uh, for the, la uh, the last uh, 40 years. So that inflation, 7.7%, and, and that's the official rate of inflation. Uh, the unofficial one, the real one, must be about 12%. So if your salary is not increasing by 12%, or if you believe in the bureaucrats with 7.7%, you are losing money every year. And now Statistics Canada just gave us some data about the increase of salary, salaries in Canada. And on average, it will be this year about 3.3%. So your salary may increase by 3.3%, but the inflation is about 7.7% or 12%. You are losing money. You are poor. And that's because of the bad policies f coming from the federal government approved and support by Polyev and the Conservative Party of Canada. Polyev can speak about inflation, but he, he, he helped to create that inflation by supporting huge deficit. With O'Toole, when O'Toole said, you know, I won't balance the budget, it will take me, oh, he said, I will, but in 10 years. And he was asking for a four years mandate. So what O'Toole was saying at the last election, the budget balance itself, like Trudeau. So the Conservative are intellectually morally corrupt. They are like the Liberals. Whoever will be the leader, it would be the same. So now we have that inflation. What can we do? Polyev said, 
oh, fire the governor of the bank. That will solve the problem. <laughs> that won't. It's only, he's telling them because he knows that the Bank of Canada is not popular. So the real solution is to not have a fiat money anymore, sound money. And the way to do that, the Bank of Canada <laughs> has an inflation target of 2% every year. 2% inflation or 20% inflation is bad. You are losing money every year. Your purchasing power is going down. Prices are <coughs> going up by 2% every year. Now it's more than 2%, 7.7, and that's only the beginning. Sorry to say that, the truth, that's only the beginning. In the U.S., the inflation is 9.1%. Now, why the inflation is, is everywhere? Because in every country, they did the same thing like Trudeau, with the support of the opposition party, like in the Conservative Party in Canada, they said to their population, stay at home, we'll give you money, that will come from our central bank, and now we have the inflation everywhere. Inflation is always because of a bad monetary policy. So firing the guys that did that, that's not the solution. The solution is to tell that guy, these bureaucrats at the Bank of Canada, you must have a zero inflation target. 0% inflation. I don't want you to create money out of thin air. To do that, the federal government must be fiscally responsible. You must balance the budget because if you don't balance the budget, the Bank of Canada will have to buy your, 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 your bonds and yeah. finance, and the Bank of Canada will have to finance you, and they'll do that by creating money, and the inflation target won't be 0%. So you need to have a coherent policy. The federal government must balance the budget as soon as possible by cutting all the spending, and we can go on on that. We have, we have ideas. <laughs> so what would be the big thing? So let's talk about what spending would you cut? What is the big thing that you would cut? If you were the prime minister today in this current economic yeah. climate that Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland have set up, the prime minister and De deputy prime minister and minister of finance, I want to make sure yeah. I get their yeah. titles right. What would a prime minister, Maxime Bernier, do to cut spending? And what would be the number one item that you'd be looking at right now? It would be easy to do that because I'm not a globalist. Contrary to Polyev and the Conservative and the Liberals and the NDP, they're globalists. Uh, you know, <coughs> Polyev agree with, with the UN. Uh, and I said the UN is a dysfunctional organization. We are giving to the UN a billion dollar, a billion dollars a year to the UN. We can save that money. What are we going to be? We're going to be part of the UN as a country, yes, for sure. But... We will give money if their programs or policies are in line with our values. <laughs> and between you and me, I don't think I think we'll be able to save a lot of money doing that because the UN is a socialist organization. So <coughs> Polyev won't do that, won't save a billion dollars. Another example, corporate welfare. We are spending ten billion dollars. We are giving grants and subsidies to big business and small business also. We need to cut that and save that money. Foreign aid. Polyev is not speaking about that in the conservative. Five billion dollars over there. We are giving money to African countries to build road, roads in Africa and fighting climate change in Africa. Christopher, do you really believe that these dictatorships in Africa are using your money and my money to fight climate change? We must stop that. We must stop that, and we will. We'll save another $5 billion. We'll bring back that money to help Canadians first. And <laughs> what we want to do as a people body is to fight for our sovereignty, put our country first, and Canadian first. I can go on. Um, because the, uh, the CBC. CBC, uh, we can save another $1 billion there. We will. We will do it. And it's not new because it's popular. I said that in 2019. And by the way, everything... I think you said it in 2017 during your leadership. Oh, right? yeah, 2017, <laughs> actually. Yeah, sorry. You're right. You're right. But, yeah, when you're doing politics based on policies and conviction and principle, you, you, say, you, 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 you must say the same thing and until you win the battle of ideas. And that's what... You look at our platform. We had the same platform in 2019, in 2021, and that would be the same one in 20. I don't know, 25th, uh, uh, because until we win that battle. So we can do a lot to balance the budget. But contrary to what I said in 2019, we won't be able to balance the budget in two years because of that huge historical deficit. We will balance the budget in four years. And, and like that, 
the Bank of Canada won't print money out of thin air if we go back to inflation, and they will be able to have a zero target inflation, and everybody will keep their purchasing power, and everybody will be the, the standard, our standard of living will be able to uh, grow. I want to talk for a second about what happened earlier this year in Ottawa, the Freedom Convoy. Yeah. Started in BC, moved to Ottawa, and then yeah. earlier this, uh, this month, in July, it came back. Um, now, I, I've been a political observer for some time. Yeah, I know. As you I, can tell yeah, yeah. from the surrounding of political buttons, I have watched politics my entire life. I have never seen a more politically divided country than we are today. How do we unify and heal our country and move forward together? Because there's a lot of people out there who are frustrated with all parties, not just the Conservatives, even the People's Party. There's people frustrated with the Greens, everyone. Show me them. Show me the one that... Let's talk about Twitter for 20 minutes. (laughs) But how do we unify and heal our country? How do we get back to a a country that is willing to talk to each other? Because... You and I, we're having a great conversation right now. People are listening to this, and I hope people are getting something from this. How do we change the atmosphere in this country? The problem is not Canadians. The problem is our politicians. And from every establishment party, they divided our population. The Conservatives did that during the last campaign, imposing mandates, and they were for passport mandates and all these draconian mandates. We were not. I said during the last campaign, we must unite everybody under the freedom umbrella, respecting our charter of rights and respecting our, our rights to choose, freedom of choice. So the, the, the way to be able to live together in a country is to respect everybody. And by the way, respect is one of our funding principles. Individual freedom, personal responsibility, respect and fairness. And all our policies are in line with these principles. So, so the, the, the way and, and, and respect the Constitution. Now you have a federal government that is interfering in uh, daycare, in, in every, everything. And, and, and people are, are mad at it. People in Alberta, they are mad. They, you know, we must respect our country. And the way to do that, there's more than one culture in Canada. And we must respect that. That's why the fathers of our Constitution wrote that constitution like that with more power at the provincial level and so right now (laughs) um, i must say that in quebec the culture of quebec is very different than the culture in alberta the culture in uh, new brunswick is very different than the culture in bc that's our country that's our country and so we must respect that but the federal government does not respect that because they are imposing their national views on Canadians and people don't like it. So, yes, if you if you are different in Alberta, we must support that. We must support what you want to do and we must support what people are doing in Atlantic Canada. So the way to unite everybody is to respect our constitution and not imposing mandate and, you know, believing in people instead of a big fat government that will tell you what to do every day of your life. That's what happened right now. And so it's sad that these establishment political parties, all the time, they they think that they know better than you and they want to impose you their views and their and their and their values. No, we must not do that. And that's the way to be able to keep that country united and keep that country prosperous. The reason I asked that question is it goes back to the Freedom Convoy and you saw it, I saw it, that there were calls for Prime Minister Trudeau to sit down with the convoy. Some of the leaders, like someone representing the convoy, to hear them out because we don't listen to each other right now. And I think there's there's a lot of frustration that people aren't being heard, like you've said. Do you listen to the other side? Do you sit down and have a conversation with someone who may not agree with you and say, you know what, I'd love to have a conversation with you? I hope it's the only way to win the the argument. It's the only way to have that discussion. You know, I'm doing politics like Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher said after politics, the word that she didn't like in politics is consensus. She said, I, I hate that because I was doing politics by conviction. And I knew that my conviction were the best one for my country. And I wanted to promote that. And I wanted to have debates. And when you look to have a consensus, you are giving and giving and giving more to the left. 
and so you don't win the debate. So yes, I'm open to have the discussion. And I believe that Canadians are more open right now because fear is not there like, like it was two years ago. And they're more open to listen to another point of view. But the challenge that I have, that we have at the PPC, the mainstream media doesn't want to give us more visibility. But actually, you know, I try, but that's, that's the reality. <laughs> Um, and, and they're woke and, and leftist. But I had a discussion with uh, Jordan Peterson, and, and I said, you know, do you have any ideas how I can be more present in the mainstream media, CBC and Radio Canada? Because I, for me, it would be good to be there and to, to speak to their viewers. And Jordan told me, forget it, Maxime. Forget it. Be on social media like me. That's the way to be successful in the future. That's what I'm doing. But the other challenge that we have, like you, their censorship on social media. And so the best example on Twitter, I used to grow by, uh, by 1,000 followers every three days. And now for the last uh, two months at, um, at 190,000 followers for the last uh, two months. So I'm not able to grow. There's the censorship and shadow ban over there. So that what I'm doing, I'm using the social media, I'm doing my best, doing podcasts with you, but also on the ground, meeting our people. And, you know, we had 840,000 votes at the last election. If each one of these voters find 10 more supporters, we'll be at 8 million votes. And by the way, they have three years to do that. <laughs> I think it's doable. But that's the way to grow. So that's the way to grow. And I need, we need to have this debate and conversation. I appreciate that you're challenging me because if you're challenging me, I'll be better. Yeah. You know, I'll think about more arguments. We need, and that's why when I'm saying we're doing politics differently, because we don't look at the polls and, and the survey. Polling is just a, a photo of the public opinion one day. But that will change. For me, the most important is the <coughs> to speak about what I believe and I believe that if I'm speaking about it, and I will have more support. And actually, we started the party at 0% in 2018, 1.6% in 2019, 5% at the last election. I believe that this party will grow. So we want to speak to your intelligence, to appeal to your intelligence, not to your emotions like the traditional mainstream party are doing. I want to just follow up on that question here for a second because... There are people who put their faith in you in the last election. They came out, they supported you, you grew the party to 5%. This next time around, people are saying, you had your shot. You had your <laughs> shot. And I'm just saying what people on Twitter, and you, as I say beforehand, Twitter is not the end-all be-all yeah, yeah, yeah. of what you should mm -hmm. be believing, people. Go figure it out for yourself. But how do you grow a party that is slowly growing? Because people are expecting you to make some inroads next yeah. election. And if you can't do it in three, are you are you the party <laughs> that they need right now? And I'm not trying yeah, to be no, weird I, here. I'm just trying to be sincere because there are people who went, I'll put my faith in Max yeah. for this election because yeah. we're going to get him elected or yeah. we're going to get yeah, some yeah, people yeah. elected. None got elected. Yeah, yeah. So how do you continue going on if you don't get people elected? Because we are able to grow our support. Because the best example of that is, um, like I said before, Margaret Thatcher. She was able to win the support of, of and, and, and speaking about free markets and freedom and freedom of choice in the UK in 1979, that was not popular, but it became popular and she was able to win. So I believe at the next election, we'll be able to have candidates elected. I cannot tell you if we're gonna have one, two, three or 10, I don't know, but we will grow. Look at the Green Party of Canada. It took them 15 years to have more than 1.6% of the vote. We did that at our first election. Yeah. And after 35 years, they're at 2%. And for us, after four years, we are at 5%. We will grow. And I'm asking people, you know, I, and I want to go with that argument about splitting the vote. Yeah. Th th that's Which the, I was going to follow up on. Yeah, yeah, that's the argument. Oh, Bernie, don't waste your vote with Bernie. You're splitting the vote. First, the party that wants to split the vote is the Conservative Party of Canada. They want to split the liberal vote. That's the only way for them to be in government. There's more seats in the big GTA in Ontario than in all Alberta. So Poliev is telling you what you want to hear during the leadership campaign because he's 
running for the Conservative Party of Canada because he knew and it, it, that is uh, the only way to win the leadership, like I did in 2017. I had 49% of the vote. And after that, O'Toole did the same thing. I'm a true blue. And he was able to win. But the real face of the Conservative Party is a party that doesn't have any conviction. And what they will do, they will do polling and focus group. And because we are living in a socialist era right now in Canada and around the globe, they, and they want to have m the support the seats in the GDA, they will go to the left to please. They're doing politics. They're pandering, pandering to the GDA. They're pandering to different interest groups to have support. They will do that. We cannot trust them. So their goal is to split the liberal votes. Our goal is not to do that. And when you're saying that we are splitting the vote, the assumption is that 100% of our supporters are coming from the Conservative Party of Canada. That's not the reality. I'm on the ground. I'm looking. I'm speaking with people. I can tell you my feeling is about a third of our supporters are coming from the Conservative Party of Canada. Another third are coming from the NDP uh, or the Green Party or the Liberals. The best example for that, our team in PI, I was in PR in May. Our team over there are coming from the Green Party over there. They like what we are doing because we are a populist, smart populist party, and we are promoting common sense policies, and they like that. So a third is coming from other political parties than the Conservative Party of Canada. And another third are people who never voted at the federal level. And there's 40% of them that didn't vote at the last federal election. Imagine if we have only 20% of them, it will be 50% uh, of them, sorry, will be at 20% in the poll, it will be at 20%. So why, we must ask the question, why these people never voted at the federal level? Because they don't believe in traditional politicians. They are saying they're all the same. They're saying something that I like today. They'll, go, they'll do the opposite tomorrow. And they don't trust politicians. And they're right, you know. <laughs> if you look at the poll, the credibility of a politician is almost zero. So they don't trust them. They don't trust them because of their actions, the action of these politicians. So we are offering an alternative, a real different populist common sense alternative. And so we can have their support. So I believe that we will grow in the next election. More people will come on our side. And it's not my fault if the Conservative Party of Canada is not conservative anymore. So what they want to do, they want to go in the central left and they will do that. And so that's why this party is intellectually and morally corrupt because they're speaking like leftists, like liberals, but they have the, the, they have the conservative as a name. So they are giving more credibility to the leftist narrative by speaking like them and adding as a name conservative. So the conservative party of Canada is only conservative by name and only conservative during a leadership campaign. My last question for you, Max, before we ramp up, because I know you have other things you have to get to. And oh I, just God, uh, I, know, <laughs> I know it doesn't, does not feel like it's been 40 minutes, but here we are. Um, what is the biggest issue that Canadians are facing today, in your words, in your opinion? Uh, there's two big issues. First, the recession, inflation, uh, the economic situation. And, you know, it, it, um, it's sad to say, but it would be worse before being better. And the other issue is a cultural war. We, you know, we have all the woke and the left and the leftists everywhere, uh, and we wa we must uh, uh, fight wokeism. And actually, you know, we are the only party that is speaking about that again. The part, the conservative party won't speak about it. They won't speak. I'm the only one <laughs> who is saying that a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. I think it's based on science, but you cannot say that anymore. So we need to fight that. If I get put into YouTube jail, Max, for that statement, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But continue, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but so so that's another uh, big challenge for us. Uh, our have we need to fight for what we believe, and we need to have our Western civilization values back here in our country. And that's not the case in our education system, journalism, uh, 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 our politicians. Wokeism is everywhere. So uh, that's, that's a big challenge that we have. And I may add a third one, privacy. Pri 
privacy will be privacy will be the challenge of the future with all the technology and and i believe that if we have another pandemic they will use the technology they will use our iphone they will be able to track us that's against our privacy and if you if you want to keep what is private for you for yourself we are the only party that is fighting to be sure that our charter of rights our privacy our freedom of choice will be respected so it, it, it tomorrow it won't be better but we need to fight and to do that and speak with more people but i believe and that a near future uh, our country will be like uh, we were uh, in the last uh, maybe in 1960 and with more technology but you know family also family is another you know these uh, woke want to destroy the family values so there's a lot of challenges and we are there and i believe that we will win that uh, cultural war uh, but we like i said in my speeches we need to do a common sense revolution a freedom revolution and we are we are doing that revolution but we won't be able to change that tomorrow we need more people on our side and that's why i'm here in alberta today max i want to thank you so much for doing this now for those who've been watching and those who have are tuning into this later on Max is going to be here for the next two days. He's here tomorrow and Saturday. He has two public events that are open for anyone to join. Uh, tomorrow night at uh, in Springbank, uh, I'm assuming I can give the address because yeah. it is a public address, uh, 244082 Range Road 32 here in Calgary. Uh, there will be a barbecue at an acreage, and you yeah. can go out and meet Max. Uh, I'm assuming if, you, if you're yelling at your screen right now, why didn't you ask this question? Why didn't you follow up with this question? He would be happy yeah. to answer those questions at the barbecue tomorrow night from 5 to 8. Yeah. That's 244082 Range Road 32 in Calgary. And then if you do not have enough filling of pancakes already <laughs> through this stampede, you can go out to the People's Party of Canada's Stampede Breakfast on Saturday morning from 8.30 to 12 at the CKE Community Hall in the South West, which is at 1015 73rd Avenue. The links will be, or the addresses will be on our social media pages, so check them out. Highly recommend that you go out there, ask Max some questions. And the tough one. I like, I like the tough one. The tough ones. He has answered some of the tough ones today. Uh, and also meet Kelly, the Alberta... Sorry, I, I always get this the title wrong. I'm going to get this right. The, left, the, the Western Canadian and Territories Lieutenant of the People's Party of Canada, including Thunder Bay, because I always like to throw in the fact that he has to do Thunder Bay as well, part of Ontario. <laughs> but um, he will be there as well. I highly recommend you get out there. And then also, if you are in Red Deer listening to this right now or listening to this at a later date, there are some events in Red Deer on Saturday that Max is going to be at. The links to those, the addresses, will be in the People's Party of Canada.ca website. Go to the events page. There will be a link. We'll link it in the show notes later on. Go out, check it out, go to the events, talk to Max. Go talk to people because it actually does help us. Yeah. Max, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And so for your viewers, if they want to know more, they can go on our website, peoplespartyofcanada.ca. They can go on my Twitter account for the details of uh, my trip here in Alberta. Uh, I will be back in August also. That's only the beginning. My goal is to be on the road when I can travel by plane. I don't know what will happen. But don't forget, I'm suing with Brian Petford, the federal government, because of my I don't my constitutional right to be able to travel by plane, by train, or by boat in this country, and I cannot. I, I wasn't able to, and it, they just suspended that. So our case will be, our hearing will be uh, October 31st. So they can follow that. I hope we'll win that. So we are doing the battle for more freedom, to change the public opinion, but also in the court. And I want to thank you for giving me that opportunity to be with you. And maybe uh, next time, if you want me on your show, I'll be happy to be here. We would love to have you back in August once you're back in Alberta. Um, so with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this awesome episode of the Cross Border Interviews Live with the Honorable Maxime <laughs> Bernier, the leader of the People's Party of Canada. Like I said, the links are in the show notes to Maxine's uh, Twitter, to the event page on the uh, People's Party. So highly recommend that you 
you check it out. Go out, chat to Max, because he will answer all the tough questions that you have. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, get out from behind social media for 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It does make our society better when we talk to each other and we don't just randomly spew vile on social media. So with that, have fun, and we will chat to you later. Thank you.